Are you struggling to find relief from long COVID or weird mystery symptoms? Stay tuned to uncover the surprising link between gluten and your symptoms. Be sure to stay all the way to the end where I will share some tips and tricks about how to remove gluten from your diet. Hello and welcome to this growing community of people who are ready to bust through their weird mystery symptoms that conventional medicine doesn't have answers for. I'm Carrie Bailey, your functional nutritionist. I work with people with anxiety, depression, and other weird mystery symptoms. And we use food as medicine. As always, my disclaimer is to follow your inner knowing, follow your inner instincts and guidance system when it comes to the information I provide. The information I provide is general in nature and it may not be specific to you. One of the top foods I recommend removing when you wanna heal is gluten. Adjusting to a gluten-free lifestyle can be overwhelming and challenging. Our food supply is saturated in gluten. It is everywhere. Gluten is hidden in all sorts of places that would surprise you, like medications and supplements and personal care items, not to mention less obvious ingredients on ingredient labels. The best thing you can do is read every single label. Get familiar with the ingredients that are going into your body. And as much as possible, Try to buy food that doesn't have an ingredient label, like whole foods, right? When you buy an avocado, a banana, parsley, there is no ingredient label. So you know what exactly what it is. There are five reasons that gluten is a problem. Number one reason is that folic acid has been added to all wheat in the US since the 90s. The government did this as an effort to reduce birth defects. The problem is that this folic acid is synthetic. It is not the natural form and your body still has to convert folic acid into the bioavailable form of methylfolate in order for your body to use it and process it. So having this folic acid in the system might actually be giving you too much folic acid or also preventing your body, slowing down its ability to make its own methylfolate from eating leafy greens. Wheat, which is the grain that makes up gluten along with barley and rye. Wheat is the most heavily sprayed crop that's out there. It is heavily sprayed with a pesticide called glyphosate. Glyphosate is also known as Roundup. And they, they spray this not only to keep the weeds and things away from it while it's growing, but they also spray it with glyphosate to help it release <clears throat> the wheat when they harvest it. Finding an organic wheat does not make wheat a better choice. And there's a lot of confusion out there that people think that wheat is only a problem for people with celiac disease or digestive issues, but that's just not true. You could show symptoms of digestive issues um, with wheat or without wheat. You might show symptoms of brain inflammation that come across as ADHD, brain fog, memory issues that's really tied to wheat. And it, you wouldn't have an easy way to tie those two together. If you have digestive issues, you definitely want to take wheat out. You don't, doesn't mean that you have to be celiac that it's affecting you. Some people just are intolerant. Most people in the United States are intolerant to our wheat because our wheat is more toxic than wheat in Europe. A lot of people say to me, so, so wheat is a hard thing to let go of. I think I've talked about this in previous uh, videos because it is a comfort food. It is um, impacting our opioid receptors in our brain, right? It's something that we love and it's tied to everything. It's addictive. People often say, well, I took it out and I didn't notice a difference. Okay, so the lot. let's unpack that for a little bit. So when you take something out, it's not like a switch, right? Um, a light switch. It doesn't like suddenly suddenly all the inflammation is gone. There's a lot of healing that is required once you remove that wheat. There's a lot of healing that has to be required. And so you would have to keep it out for, I don't know, six weeks or more to notice a difference from removing it. And you might not, again, you might not notice a symptom when you take it out directly. Some people say, well, I don't eat much gluten. Oh, I just ate this here, this there. Well, you, you can be pregnant or not pregnant, right? You can't be a little pregnant. You cannot just reduce gluten. Unfortunately, it really does need to come out 100%. And to some people, 100% might be like celiac. Like with celiac, even a crumb can cause them problems. So you have to be, it just depends on your tolerance. Now you might not have celiac, but even a crumb might cause a problem for you. So everybody's threshold is different, but it's important to do a test. Take it out 100%. 
take it out for six weeks and see how you do. Removing gluten is just one piece of the puzzle. There's a lot of other foods out there that I talk about throughout my videos that you want to take out. Taking out one problem food might not solve the whole case. Compared to fruits and vegetables, there's basically zero nutritional value to wheat. It fills you up. It doesn't fuel you up. It doesn't have the phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals and all those things that fruits and vegetables have. The fifth and probably the most important reason why gluten is a problem and why you should remove it is that it feeds pathogens. So pathogen is any organism that's causing harm to its host, to you. So a pathogen would be bacteria like E. coli or fungus like candida or viruses like COVID or Epstein-Barr. These are all pathogens. Pathogens create imbalance between your healthy productive bacteria and your unhealthy bacteria. When you feed pathogens gluten, they grow, they get bigger, they get stronger. So now you have this unproductive bacteria, which is heavily dominant in your gut. And then that means there's less of the productive bacteria. And the productive bacteria are important because they help you make your B vitamins, your vitamin K, your B12, your amino acids, your essential fatty acids. If you're not feeding them, they eat fruits and vegetables. So they want your fruits and vegetables. Whereas if you're eating gluten, you're growing the unwanted pathogens. I don't like to say good and bad, right? Because there's a place for both of them. There's balance in there. You're always going to have um, unproductive bacteria. It's just that you want the amount to go down so that you don't have symptoms. So the other issue with having these unproductive path pathogens in your body, the more you have, the stronger they are, but they're also living off of you, right? They're using your body as a host. They're eating your food that you're feeding them. They're pooping in you. They're eating in you. So your body has to get rid of all of their waste. You have your own waste your body creates. Well, now your body is burdened by having to get rid of their waste as well and the harm that they're doing. So by taking out gluten, you're giving them less food, less food for your pathogens. Let's talk a little bit about where gluten is and where you can find this in the food system. Well, gluten is everywhere. It really is literally in almost in every single food on every at in every single restaurant. It's in the grocery store. It's in things that you don't think about. Gluten is everywhere in our food supply. It's in obvious places and less obvious places. There are hidden sources of glutens in medications, in supplements, personal care items, natural flavorings, condiments. The list is too long to share here, so I'll provide a link to the full list of places gluten is hidden in the description below. You may not have thought about um, eating French fries. When you're eating French fries at a restaurant, the question is, is that fryer cross-contaminated with wheat. So if they've battered and fried anything else besides French fries, there's a good chance that those French fries are going to have gluten. Anytime you eat out at a restaurant, there's there's a, it definitely increases your risk of cross-contamination. Having worked in a restaurant when I was in my 20s, I know what can happen, right? So you might have a dish, the a salad, and they wanted no bread on the salad, but somebody put the bread on the salad in the back and they're like, oh, they didn't want bread. Do you take this, take it off, right? Did a piece fall in? You know, how much of that bread that was put on there and taken off was removed? So there's a lot of risk in, in any time you're eating out or having someone else feed you. Sometimes people ask me, well, Carrie, can I have sour? I had a really good quality sourdough or I used, I made homemade bread with einkorn, but I'm so, so, so sorry, but those are still gluten and those are still going to feed your pathogens and be a problem. There won't be folic acid in it, but there's going to be other problems with it. Even though oats by nature are gluten-free, they don't have gluten in them. So if you were to grow some oats in your own garden, in your backyard, Sure, you could eat that oats, but most oats are cross-contaminated with wheat, either doing during the growing method because the fields are close together or during the processing. So you want to make sure to, if you're eating oats, to look for a gluten-free oat on the label. Before we jump into the tips and tricks of removing gluten from your diet, I want to invite you to get a copy of my anxiety and depression recovery guide in the description and the comments below. In this guide, I provide you with recipes and tips and tricks and everything you need 
to help you get started on this healing journey. Here are some ideas for replacing gluten in your diet. Now, the last thing I want you to do is go buy gluten-free bread and gluten-free cookies and gluten-free crackers because, well, first of all, you're going to be disappointed because they really don't taste that good. And even if you do buy them and you get used to them, there is no nutritional value in those either. They're still a heavily processed food. Um, it might be the first baby step that you need to take, but generally I don't recommend going there and starting there. I like to kind of think about meals. So thinking about breakfast, if you are a person who would normally have cereal, I would recommend choosing um, a gluten-free oat or a millet. Millet is naturally gluten-free. You could get a cereal made of that. You could cook it up just and eat it like a hot cereal. Or if you wanted an even better upgrade to your cereal, make a big bowl of fruit um, and put eat the fruit as your cereal. Another breakfast favorite with gluten in it is pancakes and waffles. So you could upgrade again with oats or millet to upgrade your pancakes and waffles, or even better is to upgrade your pancakes and waffles to potatoes or sweet potatoes. Now you can get really creative with this. Um, if you have any questions about how to do that, you know, pop a comment below. I'd love to answer your questions. But let's talk about a popular lunch item with bread, which is sandwiches. So upgrade your sandwiches to a wrap. There's a lot of creative ways to make a wrap out there, things that are more filling, and then there's whole foods based. So um, a more filling option would be taking a, an alternative tortilla. There's a lot of wraps that are gluten-free out there by nature. Things like a Siete brand makes a an almond flour wrap. And that might be a good choice. They also have chickpea and cassava flour. You can also get a coconut wrap. Nuco makes an organic coconut wrap. I also love to use seaweed. Another wrap idea is to use the nori that they make seaweed out of. It can buy it and you can buy it in big sheets. And in that you can wrap up anything. You can wrap up turkey and avocado and sprouts and spinach and tomatoes. Um, any filling for a sandwich, you can wrap in that and you can roll it up in a little bit of water and you got a beautiful wrap. And my last and generally favorite is lettuce or collard greens. So you can use a butter lettuce or collard greens to put all your contents of your wrap in, wrap it up, roll it up, super yummy, delicious, and a completely whole food. Now I will warn you, <laughs> these aren't quite as neat and clean as a sandwich. It is a little bit of a messy ordeal. So have some napkins and let's talk about some dinner options. So for dinner, you usually eat pasta as one option. And so there's a lot of good gluten-free options out there for pastas. There are, one of my favorites is chickpea pasta, but if you're of a sensitive tongue, it does have a stronger taste or you can try a rice pasta. Um, so those are good sort of next step options. And even better is to make a whole foods options, which would be spiralized zucchini, or spaghetti squash. Now there's some creative options for pizza as well. Now this one's a little bit harder. Again, you have to get used to the idea that this isn't going to be the pizza that you're thinking about. <laughs> so if, if your go-to for your comfort food for your like Friday night thing is pizza, you're going to have to do a little bit of mindset shift for this one. Bonza, B-A-N-Z-A, -A, makes a gluten-free chickpea-based pizza crust plain in the freezer section. You just top it with your toppings and bake it. Or if you want to get a little bit healthier and a little bit more work, it's to take potatoes. So steam potatoes. You could even do this with sweet potatoes if you want that sweeter taste. Take your potatoes, take your sweet potatoes, steam them, mash them. You can put whatever flavors you want in them. You can put onion powder, garlic powder, salt, whatever you want on them. Mash them up then put them in, make them in balls and make them into like, kind of like a corn tortilla size and lay them out and just really push them down really thin and bake them for about 15 minutes on 400. And that's going to give you a really nice pizza crust. And on top of that, you top it with anything that you want to top it with. Then you're going to bake it for another five minutes. If you transitioned off gluten, share with the community in the comments below what worked best for you on transitioning off gluten. In summary, gluten isn't really a healthy food for anyone, but especially not people that have anxiety, depression, long COVID, or any other 
chronic or complex health issue. It can be really challenging to eliminate gluten from your diet because it's everywhere and in everything. But rest assured, once you transition away from it, you'll feel really amazing. Gluten has added folic acid. It's sprayed with glyphosate. It's low in nutritional value and it feeds unwanted pathogens. We talked about some of the surprising places that gluten is hidden. And lastly, we talked about some ways that you can replace gluten in your meals. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I create a new video each week. If you'd like to see more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next week.